Welcome back and also welcome to Megan Nickel, who's been away at Tua Tapri on the weekend, getting up to some world firsts out there at Tua Tapri. Yeah, they had the locator beacon exercise for the first time and it's amazing. The, uh, someone sets off a locator beacon on the ground, someone that's injured, the helicopter can pinpoint it directly and fl hover above it, it's amazing. And I think you took out a helicopter. Yeah, I went for a bit of a bit of a spin. Oh, you were in the passenger seat, were you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, we'll have to, we'll have to take a look at it. This is Tua Tapri and the locator beacon, the big civil defence day out there on the weekend, Megan Nickel reports. Most people think of Tua Tapri, they think of the world's best sausages. But today, we take a more serious look at civil defence. What happens in Southland's smaller towns when an emergency happens? What sort of things do you do when you have the exercises? Well, this is today with a sample of them. We've, I try to change them every time, but uh, it's getting harder and harder because they're, they're fairly expert uh, at anything they do out here now. So uh, each year is, I've got to scratch my head for new things to come up. What went on today? What went on today? Well, the first one uh, that came in was the uh, children trapped up in the cars up at uh, the dump up there that you've already got on. The kids had uh, they'd had a party on glue and beer and sort of fell in amongst the old cars. How long does it take you to get out of bed into the truck and to emergencies such as this? Oh, usually between oh, two and two and four minutes to the station on the engine and then out again. Um, are you called to emergencies like this very often? Oh, the call outs this year have been quite um, frank, you know, like we've had probably average about two a month sort of things, things like that. They've had a few car accidents this year, it's, you know, it's not the best thing to go to, but, you know, that's, that's what happens. I see you've got some new cutters there, can you tell us a bit about them? Yes, oh yeah, we just required some cutters from um, Riversdale actually, they've got the new the new gear, so they just come up surplus, so we acquired them. The local Lions Club, I think, uh, put up for them, so it's good, good of them to do that for us. Most of our patients come from the local high school, because they're really good actors, and uh, that's where all our patients come from. Yeah. What's the first thing you do when you get to the scene of an emergency? Well, you just ascertain what's what's happened, uh, how many people were involved. Um, you know, secure the ground for um, the ambulance officers and that like that. We have a training here every exercise every two years, and a briefing on our alternative years. Is that um, important? That training that you get? Very important. Because if you've got a lot of people uh, volunteering for a job and they don't get a training or an exercise, they're sort of wasting their time. When the real thing comes, they don't know where they're coming or going. We know that there's someone injured. We're waiting for the locator beacon here with the helicopter and we're going to set off any minute. And then the last one, of course, was the helicopter one where this man was a diabetic. He had overdue and uh, he collapsed somewhere and we suspected he had an injury as well. So they, uh, he, he let out his beacon and uh, the helicopter was notified and they came in and found him. Last year we did the highest number of rescues in the South Island. Have you ever had any close calls in the helicopter? Oh, I had a couple of reasonably close ones, yeah. What happened? Oh, engine failures, two engine failures. How did you cope? <laughs> uh, it's not bad at the time, it's afterwards, it's not so good when you think about it. Well, a locator beacon is a very technical piece of equipment that's been uh, uh, manufactured so that wherever people go, if they take one of these things with them, if they get into trouble at all, all they've got to do is a very, very simple device. They just take a little plastic cover off the top and they can switch one switch on. And that will alert the, uh, the, the signal goes to the satellite and that notifies the police. The police get in touch with the helicopter and they can be found within hours where it used to take days to get these people. Because we can activate the beacons from the helicopter if someone's injured and for some reason can't contact us, we can um, activate the beacon and find them ourselves so they don't need to do anything. How do you think today went? 
quite good. We could have done with a few more volunteers. I suppose you're always looking for volunteers. Always, always. You never have an, uh, a practice without something going wrong, but of course that's what the practice is for. You're far better to have something go wrong at a practice rather than uh, on the real thing. Well, what were your impressions or memories of that weekend at Tuatapri? I think the main thing was just that those, everyone involved there,